My name is Sasha Lake. I'm a research uh, fellow here um, at SSF, and this morning I'll be presenting on a case support showcasing the suboccipital nerve with the cutaneous branch. So the uh, the case report was uh, published on Curious on July 6th, so I'd like to thank everyone uh, for their help, Dr. Iwanaga, Katie, uh, Dr. Tubb, and Dr. Eskoyan for their help with the paper. So the outline of the presentation will be um, as follows. First, I'll give background uh, information on the anatomy of spinal nerves and the suboccipital nerve, then present the case report, and then discuss the variants of the suboccipital nerve as it stands in the literature. So there are 31 pairs of uh, spinal nerves. You have eight cervical nerves, 12 thoracic nerves, five lumbar nerves, and uh, five sacral and one coccygeal uh, nerve. Spinal nerves uh, carry motor sensory autonomic uh, signals between the spinal cord uh, and the rest of the, the body. They originate from the uh, dorsal and uh, they originate, sorry, from uh, rootlets that converge into roots, uh, both ventral and uh, dorsal uh, roots. The ventral and dorsal roots then merge together to form the spinal nerves, which then would uh, bifurcate into the dorsal and uh, ventral rami. The, vent the ventral uh, rami would uh, go on to supply the anterior uh, lateral uh, uh, trunk and limbs, and then the dorsal rami continues to uh, innervate the, uh, the back muscles or the skin of the back with sensory um, innervation. The suboccipital nerve. Nope, I go on to the next slide. Next slide. Okay, next slide. So the suboccipital nerve is formed uh, from the dorsal rami of the uh, the first uh, uh, cervical spinal segment, um, and on like the other spinal nerves, the, usually the ventral rami is larger than the dorsal rami, but for the suboccipital nerve, the dorsal rami is uh, larger than the ventral uh, rami. Um, as it emerges from the uh, vertebral canal, it courses over the posterior arch of the um, atlas. Don't have a pointer, but here. And it's usually found between the um, uh, inferior to the vertebral artery. And as it emerges out, it can be uh, found at the window of the suboccipital uh, triangle where it innervates those muscles. Um, here, the rectus capitis and obliquus capitis, uh, superior and um, inferior. It also uh, supplies motor innervation to the semispinalis uh, capitis. Okay, so for the case support uh, during routine dissection um, of the occipital uh, region of uh, adult uh, cadaver, um, both left-sided and right-sided uh, suboccipital nerves were visualized. The left-sided uh, suboccipital nerve was enlarged, and it was about four times the size of the contralateral right uh, suboccipital nerve. It coursed medial to the vertebral artery um, at the posterior arch of the atlas, and then it continued uh, cranially um, uh, 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 by piercing the trapezius muscle. And uh, it was found to innervate a patch of skin that was like located uh, below the lambdoid suture at the level of the um, ineon. No other um, branches were identified. And the right-sided suboccipital nerve had its typical size and morphology and length and with no um, cutaneous uh, branches. So this was a schematic diagram that was used um, in the paper. And right here is the cutaneous branch of the suboccipital uh, nerve that was seen medial to the vertebral artery um, and innervating the shorter, uh, the short suboccipital muscles as it should and continuing cranially to innervate the patch of skin that was like below the level of the landoid suture at the level of the ineon. And uh, this was the gross uh, section uh, of the dissection. Here again was the vertebral artery with the nerve medial to the vertebral artery. And here the semispinalis the spinalis capitis muscle has been reflected. You can see the 
unusual long, long length of the C1 nerve. So now for variants of the suboccipital nerve. So I just want to point, point out that throughout um, textbooks and literature, uh, it has been uh, perpetuated that there's no C1 dermatome. There's only a C2 and C3 uh, dermatome, dermatome, which uh, comes from the greater and lesser um, occipital nerves. And uh, some anatomists, uh, like uh, William uh, Henry Hollinshead back in 1982, did um, put in a textbook that uh, the dorsal root of the C1 nerve, it can be absent. And some uh, physicians also agree that there's no clinically detectable sensory region for the um, C1 nerve. And uh, it has been shown in some embryology studies that the dorsal root of the upper uh, five to six most rostral ganglia actually disappear um, in early development of some birds and mammals. However, there are studies um, out there that actually um, uh, verify variations of the um, of the anatomy of the C1 uh, nerve one was by uh, Tubbs et al. They used uh, 40 uh, cadavers, uh, which amounted to 80 sides, and they um, classified the anatomy of the C1 nerve um, into type one and type uh, two. Type one had two components, A and B, and 34 sides had the type one formation where the ventral and a dors uh, there was a ventral and dorsal root uh, with a dorsal root ganglion for the uh, C1 nerve. And then for type B, uh, there was a dorsal uh, and ventral roots, but no, um, uh, no dorsal roots associated. And that, and that uh, included only nine sides. But the uh, most common uh, formation was uh, seen uh, in the type 2, where there was, no, uh, there was only a ventral root uh, component. And then uh, this study by Ognin and Nathan going back as far as like 1973, um, he did show in uh, 25 uh, adult cadavers, uh, which amounted again to 50 sites, that the C1 dorsal root, it uh, may be rudimentary or it can share a ganglion with the spinal accessory nerve. And because it shares a ganglion with the spinal uh, accessory nerve, which is cranial nerve 11, some uh, have um, concluded that that ganglion doesn't have any sensory component, but it instead uh, houses uh, appropriate reception for the C, uh, for the spinal accessory nerve. But uh, in his study, he concluded that the dorsal root was uh, present in just about 50%, uh, 46% of um, his subjects. And he also came up with a classification system that uh, showed five types um, uh, of association between the C1 nerve and the spinal um, accessory nerve. Um, so type 1, there was no connection between the uh, dorsal root and spinal accessory nerve. And uh, in type 2, there was a communication between the uh, dorsal uh, roots and the spinal accessory nerve. In type 3, the dorsal root communicated with the dorsal spinal cord via the uh, spinal accessory nerve, and in type 4, there were no um, posterior roots of the C1 nerve and also no uh, connections to the spinal accessory nerve. In the study, he also further um, concluded uh, uh, an accessory occipital nerve um, and because he saw that the dorsal uh, rami of the C1 nerve after innovating the Suboccipital, the muscles of the suboccipital sub triangle here. He did show that it can extend uh, uh, as a cutaneous branch um, on the posterior neck of the inferior part of the of the scalp, and it can sometimes travel with the occipital artery, or uh, the, the cutaneous branch can actually connect with the um, the greater or lesser suboccipital uh, occipital nerves. So in conclusion, um, the suboccipital nerve can have motor and sensory uh, innovation, and it needs to be documented more uh, in anatomy and neuroscience texts. And further studies are needed to explore the anatomy and prevalence of the cutaneous branch. And uh, for clinicians, uh, they should possibly consider this cutaneous uh, contribution when treating patients with um, occipital pain. That's it.